Deep in the Sengalan Mountains of southern Siberia, 20 miles from Russia's border with Mongolia, a small island in the center of the frigid lake Terracol harbors a big mystery. At 4,000 feet above sea level, Lake Terracol is high up in the mountains. It regularly gets down to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, and the ground surrounding the lake is predominantly permafrost. Archaeologists working in the remote mountains come across an unusual site in the middle of the lake. Out on a small eight and a half acre island, they see the ruined remains of numerous large walls and buildings. The crumbling walls and ruins practically cover the entire island. What is this place? The complex is made up of a large rectangular external wall, 705 feet long by 531 feet wide. Inside, there are two main courtyards and the remains of a large central structure. A chain of smaller interconnected walled yards and buildings surround the perimeter. The complex on the island is about the size of two football fields. I mean, that is huge. The exterior wall, or curtain wall, is also really thick, about 40 feet at its widest, and also about 30 to 40 feet high. All the walls and buildings are made of clay bricks, so the site has become known as Porbajin, or the clay house. Based on the types of material and construction methods used, Archaeologists believe the site must be at least a thousand years old. It would have taken a lot of time and energy to build this enormous complex, especially in such a cold and remote location. But you can just imagine how it would have looked, this huge walled structure standing out there in the middle of the lake. It would have been really stunning. Bizarrely, the archaeologists find very little evidence of human presence at Porbajan. When humans spend a prolonged period of time somewhere, they leave behind what archaeologists call a cultural or occupational layer of artifacts. But at this site, they find nothing. With no evidence to indicate who lived here, archaeologists must now dig deeper to determine what this massive structure was. In the winter, this part of Siberia is cold, and archaeologists don't even find evidence that they tried to heat this place. No, no fires, no hearths. There were thick walls which could dampen some of the cold, but when temperatures are well below freezing all winter long, this place would be unlivable. With no evidence of heating and no cultural layer, it doesn't appear that anyone actually lived here. Why would someone build such an elaborate structure on an island in the middle of nowhere, only to leave it unoccupied? At 40 feet high, that exterior wall was really good for keeping people out. And its position on the island is similar to the classic military tradition of building moats around forts and castles. If it's not a domestic structure, then perhaps it could have been a military site. Who was living here around a thousand years ago that needed to protect themselves? During the Middle Ages, the Uyghurs, a nomadic Turkic-speaking people, once ruled an empire that spanned across Mongolia and into southern Siberia. They were known for their formidable fighting skills and dominated the area for centuries. Today, this area seems incredibly remote and out of the way. But during the Uyghur Empire, there were a number of trading routes and other villages nearby. So this site could have been a strategic location for defense. Looking at the outer walls, researchers do find the remains of a wooden fighting platform running along the eastern side. So it's possible that this place was built with defense in mind. But when you look closely at the structure and the layout, all of the rooms and smaller courtyards do not open into the main square. If troops suddenly needed to mobilize on short notice, this design feature would create a bottleneck. It would be a total disaster. And remember, it's surrounded by water, so quickly getting out of there is gonna be a challenge. But maybe that was the point. 
The tall walls would have been good for keeping people out, but could maybe also be used to keep people in. It's possible that this place was built to be used as a prison. Islands are used as prisons all the time. I mean, think of Alcatraz or Rikers Island. And the remote location on a lake would have been a huge deterrent for prisoners hoping to escape. Archaeologists find traces of repairs to the plaster walls, suggesting that the site had been kept up and maintained for a long period of time. Some of the interior walls were painted with red and black stripes and even have evidence of painted frescoes. So clearly, whoever built this place was also invested in how it would look. But you wouldn't go through all that trouble of making it look nice just to keep prisoners there. Maybe looking at the construction of the building itself and the materials that were used can give us a clue as to the origin and the function. Building on such a remote island would be extremely challenging. The walls appear to be made by an ancient construction method called hangtu, also known as rammed earth construction. Clay-rich soil is mixed with gravel or sand and pressed into wooden forms to create bricks. Uncovered at the site, preserved in the cold ground, researchers find decorative tiles with intricate patterns and dragon faces on them. This suggests that the builders could have been Chinese or maybe they'd studied Chinese building methods. Hang Tu is a traditional Tang Dynasty style of building, and decorated roof tiles like these were popular in China during the Middle Ages. This area has been lived in and ruled over by many different groups and cultures over the years. So until this material is dated, it's gonna be really hard to get an accurate assessment of who actually built this place. But in 2020, an international team of researchers announced that they have made a discovery that could solve the mystery of Prabhajan once and for all. The walls were primarily made of clay bricks, and wood was just a secondary construction material. But because this beam was found in the base layers of the wall, it means it was placed early on during construction. But, if archaeologists can date the wood, it'll give us much more precise information about when the structure was built and who built it. Scientists have determined that on very rare occasions, radiocarbon in the atmosphere can inexplicably rise. The largest jump like this occurred in the year 775. This excess carbon is often seen in the rings of trees that were alive during that era. On the wooden beam from Porbajan, researchers were able to identify the growth ring that was formed in 775. From there, they simply counted the tree rings to the bark edge to find out exactly when it was cut. Two more rings formed after that year, so this tree must have been felled and used in the summer of 777 AD. This date places the construction of Porbajan to the reign of Uyghur ruler, Tengri Bogu Khan. He was really interesting. Most of the Uyghurs at the time practiced Buddhism, but Bogu Khan had converted to Manichaeism, and he made it the official religion of his empire. He was actively trying to convert his subjects and may have needed a place for them to study and pray. Could this strange island complex be a Manichaean monastery? The layout of the buildings on the island are similar to a walled Buddhist temple or a monastery. There's a grand central courtyard that's surrounded by smaller structures where the monks live and study. But Bogu Khan was killed in 779 AD, and under the next ruler, the official religion was changed yet again. The construction at the Porbajan site had only started a couple of years before Bogu Khan died. So there would have been virtually no time for it to be used as a monastery. This could explain why there is no evidence that the site was ever occupied. While there isn't a definite answer on the true purpose of the building, researchers don't have much time to continue studying the site. The island itself is a plug of permafrost, and so as temperatures rise, it will thaw and soften. That means that in about 80 years, its walls will collapse into the lake, taking its secrets with it. 